In today's video, the cost of cardio and if you need to use it to look like this. Or maybe you don't. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I want to talk about when it is time for you to be adding cardio to your plan and when you absolutely should not. You see, cardio is a tool that many of us use to lose body fat. And if it's a goal of yours to lose body fat, it's absolutely a tool at your disposal. But hold on. Do we need to use cardio to get to our body fat goals? And I got a great question that I'm going to address here. And I got it on my Instagram direct message. So guys, go to my Instagram direct message. Send me your DMs. Let me know if I can help you. And if I like it, I might put it in a video. So thank you guys for the great questions. And if you like this type of information from a coach who's been doing this for well, more than a decade, and I just want to help you guys reach your goals, well, hit subscribe. It's what I love to do here. What I'd first like to do is define the word cardio, because I think for a lot of us, the word cardio is an evil five-letter word, right? I know, especially when I, was, when I was younger, the word cardio meant that it would prevent you from putting on muscle. I've learned since that that was a very incorrect observation, but there is a lot of research that actually shows that there is something called an interference effect. There is absolutely a point where adding cardio to your plan will actually decrease your ability to add muscle. So depending on your goals, cardio is going to be sometimes necessary, sometimes not necessary. And as a coach, this is what my job is, okay? Not everybody fits into the same parameters. So you have to look at the overall picture. And this is not something that I did early on as a coach or even something that my first coach did not really realizing what my daily routine was like. And I'm gonna explain why that is so important. When you hear people say, well, they do no cardio to get lean, I'm gonna explain why that is. Why can some people get lean without doing any cardio? So let's define what is cardio. Cardio is a rhythmic activity that increases your resting heart rate. That's right. Can you think of anything that might be cardio? Yeah, anything that you get off the couch for. That is cardiovascular exercise, okay? The most basic would be just going for a walk outside, okay? That's, that's cardio. Now, some people would not consider that cardio. In fact, depending on what you do for a living and what your daily routine is like, you might be walking so much that you don't need to add any cardio to your routine. Does that mean you're not doing cardio? Hey, however you want to define it. Now, what do most of us think of as cardio? Going for a jog, right? Something that really gets us out of breath. Sprinting, definitely cardio. Any type of exercise that increases our aerobic capacity or gets us breathing deeper is what most of us think is cardio, myself included. That's what I thought of as cardio. I didn't think of playing basketball as cardio. It had a cardiovascular component because I learned that the more I played basketball, the longer I could play. So you actually adapt to that style of training. And depending on what your goals are, what your sport is, certainly it can be beneficial if you add cardio to reach your goals. But I'd like to read today's questions and get into why I don't think you need to be adding cardio to reach your goals. Hey Paul, I've been dieting for a bit now. I'm currently 178 centimeters tall, 89 kilograms, and I'm at 2300 calories a day. My weight loss has been very good so far. However, I was wondering if I should add a cardio session to see better results. As of right now, I'm losing one to two pounds a week. Went down from 98 kilos in two months, down to 89, that's really awesome. I lift five days a week and cardio would be beneficial, I'm wondering. I have tried cardio in the past, however, it seems my weight halts every time I add cardio. Well, let's talk about why that might be. Okay, so first things first. What do we know about weight loss? When it comes to losing body fat and retaining muscle, we know that you wanna lose about 1% of your body weight per week. Well, you are doing just that. One to two pounds a week, actually, I did the math, and I had to do some conversions on the kilos back here, but you're losing about 2.5 pounds per week in the two months. You're down about 20 pounds, okay? Nine kilograms is about 20 pounds in those eight weeks. So what we're seeing here is a very good rate of fat loss. Now, what may have happened, which I see quite frequently with newer clients that are just learning to be accountable with their diet, learning to be more consistent with their training and their activity levels, you lose a lot at the beginning, okay? When you have a lot of body fat to lose, you have more fat stores to pull from, you'll sometimes see a rapid loss at the beginning. And then as you have less and less body fat to lose, it becomes a little bit more challenging to get that body fat off. So maybe the first week you lost four pounds and then three pounds and then three pounds and then two pounds, right? So over the last couple of weeks, if you're seeing it slow down to say a pound a week, that's when it can start to become necessary to see some changes, okay? Now, 
you're eating 2300 calories a day and you're losing weight. I would ride that out until I was done. I would also start paying attention to do what you're doing outside of the gym. And this is why I say some people don't need to do cardio to lose weight. I had a client who was struggling to lose weight. And this is a nice little story that you guys can all relate to. So after a couple weeks of cutting calories and adding cardio and her weight was, you know, dropping a half a pound or a pound a week, very slow, but consistent. She checked in one week and she was down six pounds. Now, six pounds is a lot, even for someone who has a lot of weight to lose. But this was a girl that was in contest prep. She was a competitor of mine who did not have that much body fat to lose. So I was shocked at this. And I asked her, I said, okay, what did you do this week? What did you do differently? And she swore up and down, she did nothing differently. And so I dug a little deeper and she told me she got a new job. I said, oh, you got a new job. That's great. What is your job? Cocktail waitressing at a casino. I said, hold on. So you're on your feet for eight to 10 hours a night running around the casino? Yes. Okay. Are you still doing the cardio we have? Yes. So not only was she doing the cardio that we had planned, she was on top of that working all night. However, she didn't complain. And here's why, because she was working, she was hustling. She was thinking, okay, the more I move, the more I work, the more money I make. Okay. And she actually enjoyed that, the interactions with the people and being busy. So this is where we can think of this as like, this was cardio, but it was also neat or non-exercise activity. Okay. Because it wasn't specifically meant as exercise. However, all that movement, she lost all that weight. So what did I do? I immediately pulled out all her cardio. Now, if I wanted to be one of those cool, trendy online coaches, I could say, look at my client who got lean and never did cardio. But that's not true because I do consider walking a form of cardio. Now it is low intensity, steady state. It is easy to recover from. It does not cause a lot of stress to the body in most cases. So, you know, a lot of the things that I've learned over my time in coaching is that you can't just look at calories and cardio. You have to look at the big picture of the athlete. You have to understand their sleep. You have to understand their daily activity. So my friend here that's losing on 2,300 calories, what you need to be doing is paying attention to what you're doing outside of your four to five workouts a week and your 2,300 calories. A lot of us now wear the fitness trackers, even our phones have fitness tracking options on them. So you can actually kind of look at your average daily movement and make sure that that doesn't change. So I want to talk to you about why cardio might make you not lose weight. So you've said in this, in this question that sometimes when you add cardio, it halts weight loss. I did a video on this recently, but I want to talk about the cost of cardio. What does cardio cost us? Okay. Now, a lot of times cardio is going to get demonized, but for someone like myself who comes to this office every day, answers hundreds of emails. Okay. And on the weekends I get on a plane and fly to a bodybuilding show and I'm working on the, uh, at the bodybuilding show watching pretty sedentary for me, cardio is an absolute necessity. If I was, however, on my feet all day as a server, as a medical professional in a hospital, someone that's constantly moving, I could probably get away with doing no cardio. Okay. I have that type of body that I can respond pretty quickly to types of movement. In fact, walking is the only form of cardio I do anymore. Now I have specific videos explaining exactly how you can start and get shredded using only walking as your cardio, starting with just walking outside. Okay. And how that progresses. However, what I want to talk about here is the cost of cardio. Okay. Something I learned early on is the cost of cardio is your non-exercise activity can drop. What do I mean by that? Okay. Your day has 24 hours in it, just like everybody else's. You decide that you're going to go do a 30 minute or one hour or 20 minute cardio session. You drive to the gym, you do your cardio, you drive home. That time that you spent doing that cardio session could have been spent doing something else like playing ping pong, walking your dog, playing with your kids, shooting baskets, all of which burn calories. So did you just trade cardio for non-exercise activity that would have burned an equal amount of calories? If this is the case, maybe it's not a good idea to do cardio. That's the cost of cardio. It's the time spent. Are you losing time? I've often had clients tell me that they wake up early just so they can do their cardio. So they're losing sleep. What's time better spent? waking up earlier to go to the gym and do some cardio or getting an extra hours of sleep. I will tell you oftentimes the leaner we get sleep becomes more important. So the time that you're taking away from your routine to do cardio that has a cost associated with it.
The type of cardio you do can also impact your recovery. Years ago, I would do lots of high intensity cardio. Trying to do multiple high intensity cardio sessions a week plus multiple leg training sessions a week plus upper body, I was constantly, constantly fatigued, okay? Recovery was very difficult to come by. I postulated in 2018 that I could get shredded and compete, and I'll put some videos in the screen here for you of me doing just that. Lifetime natural, 200 pounds on the screen here of chiseled manness that is me. I only walked for cardio, and why? Because there was a cost associated with time, what did I do? I brought a treadmill to my house. So I could do my cardio with very little time cost, okay? I could jump on and jump off. I could also just go for a walk outside, but that also requires weather to be permitting. Also with a treadmill, you can increase the intensity of your walking. So as you adapt, you don't necessarily have to add more time if you add speed and incline and burn more calories in the same amount of time, right? But that hit cardio was so tough for me to recover from that my workout suffered. I felt better in 2018 when I dieted down and got shredded. I kept more muscle. And at the end of the diet, I didn't feel so beat up that I put body fat right back on. I actually stayed lean for about six or seven months intentionally so that I could do more competitions and a couple photo shoots and things like that. So it was much easier for me to maintain being lean because I was using a type of cardio that was not hard to recover from. Does that mean it's easy? No. If you've never tried walking on an incline treadmill, I promise you, put that sucker on incline five, put the speed at 3.2 and watch how quickly you are out of breath if you are not used to being active, okay? Walking is a highly, highly underrated form of cardio. However, you can use any form of cardio that you want, okay? Do you need to lose weight with using cardio? Clearly not. You've reached a point where you're losing a really nice pace that I would expect to be mostly body fat, if not all body fat. However, when you do reach a sticking point, if you don't wanna reduce your calories and you don't wanna change your knee, you could add in something extra. You could add in a couple walks throughout the day. Just make sure that it doesn't halt your weight loss because you're trading cardio for non-exercise activity or some other activity that you would prefer to be doing or even sleep. Those can have downstream negative effects, okay? So this is where the cardio conversation becomes a little bit diluted because I love movement, okay? but if you already move a lot, you probably aren't gonna to need to add more cardio to your routine. It's all about looking at your current situation or your client's current situation and understanding it. And that is what has allowed me to become a much better coach and a much better athlete. All right guys, hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.